Hello and welcome to the channel. My name is Annalisa and this is going to be my December wrap up. So I'll briefly mention Shadow Wizard. This is a dark fantasy romance that uh, I read for the Reindeer Readathon. I was going through all my ebooks um, trying to find one that ended in um, a page number ending in five because that was the number I got from the random number generator for Blitzen. Um, I really didn't like it and it ended up on my worst books of 2022 video where I go into a fair amount of detail about it. Um, basically it was too dark for me. Let's start with For Prancer. I read Castle of Tangled Magic because it has sort of fall themed colors on it. Um, I finally got around to this one. I've been meaning to read it since the beginning of September I think. Yes Frodo. But I finally actually read it and I really enjoyed it. Um, it is about a young girl who lives in a castle, but the monarchy in her kingdom has been overturned. She is the descendant of the family who was the monarchy and they live in the castle, but they don't have like servants and they don't like rule anybody. They just live there and they have jobs. They're carpenters. Um, and they use the castle to host uh, community events um, that need a big building. Um, and they're preparing for that when some stuff starts happening and the castle starts falling apart. Um, so our main character has to go into the magic of the castle to figure out why it's falling apart and uh, save her home. We have a Domovoy who is a house spirit um, or a castle spirit of the castle um, who is in the shape of a fox. He's a, he transforms from fox to human-ish looking person um, back and forth and there's also a cat who's a main character and it's a sort of portal fantasy and it is all about um, looking at the past and the ways that your ancestors have maybe mistreated other people and making amends for that and so that was really cool um and it's very socialist and it's also about being brave and trying to look at things from all angles to figure out what the truth is um, so you aren't just following another person without um, examining whether you believe what they believe. And there's forgiveness and found family and um, the magic of childhood because only children can see the magical creatures. It was whimsical and sweet and I loved so many different elements of it. I gave Shadow Wizard two stars and Castle of Tangled Magic five stars. Then The Bell of Belgrave Square by Mimi Matthews. I really loved. This one was for Cupid, a um, trope that you love. So this has a uh, marriage of convenience in it. And I really liked how it worked out in this one because um, it was it was the main heroine um marrying this person to get away from her very toxic family and him marrying her because he needs her money and at the beginning the heroine is wanting to stay away from him because he has a bad reputation of being mean in the war uh to his own troops um not just um fighting uh what war was it crimea and he also is known to have um, illegitimate children living in his house openly. She knows he's not a proper gentleman, um, but uh, once she gets to kind of thinking about it, she doesn't really mind the, the relationship he has with his children that's very open and sweet. And um, she starts to bond with him over books because um, she sneaks away during social events to go read her book and he finds her that way and they talk about the fact that they have read the same books and I really love that. There are several secrets that the um, hero is keeping from the heroine. It was somewhat frustrating that he continued to keep these secrets when it was super not necessary. That was a bit annoying but not too bad and um, there's enough sweetness to it that I really enjoyed it overall. 
and it does have the um, Beauty and the Beast-esque scene where he um, takes her to his library in his house and she's like, whoa, there's so many books. Um, I really like that too. Uh, I gave the Bell of Belgrave... I gave the Bell of Belgrave Square five stars. Then we have Stars, which I read for Comet, which um, was to read a book with some ast astronomical thing in the title, like Stars, Comet, Moon. Um, and there was nothing I had checked out and nothing in my ebook um, library that suited, so I just searched Stars in, um, there we go, in my library site and came up with this. And picture books are cool. This one is kind of about using stars to be cheerful um, as you like to take a star and put it in your pocket and you can like give stars to other people to help them be cheerful. So that was very cute. I gave it five stars. Now I'm recording this early because I want to talk about several of these while my thoughts are fresh. So uh, the next books I talk about will either be um, some that are published by HarperCollins or I will skip over those and go straight to the ones that I have yet to read in the future clip. So I already have footage of me talking about Loveless um, that I filmed during my queer lit vlog uh, that I didn't put into the video so I'll be putting um, um, so I'm just gonna wrap up a little bit about this. Then I also read The Ogres and the Orphans and these are for the dancer prompt because Ogress has pretty font and uh, Donner which is to read a, a book with a cover you don't really like which this is just kind of uninspiring like the color is alright but yeah um, but anyway um, I'm going to record me talking about them and then put it and all my other reviews for HarperCollins books that I've read during the strike into one video that will come out after the strike is ended. And I forgot about the prompt for Vixen, um, which is to read a book that you're worried might be overhyped. Um, I read Nettle and Bone, which I loved. I, I started it last month, I think. Um, and it was like really creepy and dark and the whole beginning section is about this woman being in this dark horrible place where there's a bunch of cannibals and she's reanimating, um, re recreating, doing some necromancy of a d d dog out of bones, making a dog out of bones with wires and stuff. And it was very creepy and off-putting. So I put it down for a while but then I was like... I really want to try it because so many people say it's so good so I tried it um and it really was good because it stopped being gross 30 to 50 pages in it wasn't gross anymore which grossness puts me off more so than like medium bad things happening so you've probably heard the synopsis before it's about a princess whose two older sisters have been married off to this prince one at the time one died the other one's being abused and so she wants to go kill this prince to stop him from killing her sister and I'm continuing to abuse the sister so she goes to a hedge witch fairy godmother some kind of magical lady gives her three impossible tasks she completes two of them uh and that's where the story kind of kicks off the second task is to build a dog out of bones and if she completes these three impossible tasks the person the magical lady will help her kill the prince um and then we have a quest style journey um going to kill the prince <laughs> um and we meet some new friends along the way and the bone dog turns out not to be creepy he's just a nice happy dog um because it doesn't go into any more detail about how gross he is and how his parts don't match up to each other and she doesn't spend any more time with the cannibals after that so i really enjoyed all of that part yeah i really love the side characters that got added in and their interconnected relationships that they formed in the little squad that we put together so i ended up giving nettle and bone five stars now future me will give you the rest of the reviews Okay, it's Future Me, and I have finished one more HarperCollins read, which is I Can Make This Promise, and that will go be going in my HarperCollins wrap-up video. 
then we have my last two reindeer readathon reads so i finally finished on the spectrum um autism faith and the gifts of neurodiversity and i really liked the last few um essays that i hadn't gotten to yet um several of them were interviews where he talked to um students and faculty who wanted to know more about autistic people and how they could be um, helpful and more inclusive of autistic people um, so that was nice and he um, acknowledges it, especially in those parts that he is privileged because of his sexuality his race and his gender he's a cishet white man there were several instances not where he was writing the essay but where he was quoting other people in his essays where they compared racism to they compared ableism to racism which is something that BIPOC have asked us not to do so um know that that's in there and that that is not something that is uh good the best part of the book in my mind is how it talks about autistic people in the arts as opposed to autistic people in the sciences which is where a lot of the representation for autistic people is um so i like that aspect then we have the mcgregor grooms um this was for the prompt to start a series whereas the um on the spectrum which i gave four stars um was to finish a book that you had already started and so i started this sort of trilogy that's all in one book it's a trilogy of novellas so i read the first novella and i didn't really like it it is a lot about the entire concept of this whole series she's writing um about the mcgregors not just the grooms but the brides and several others um there's a mcgregor brides trilogy um is that their grandpa is fixing them up and trying to get them all married off which brings up the heteronormativeness of that and how first of all he is trying to fix them up in straight relationships only and also as far as i know i haven't read the others but nor roberts reliably doesn't write queer romance but also the allonormative of maybe some of your grandkids don't want to get married maybe they either like casual relationships maybe they want to get into a, a queer platonic relationship maybe they don't want any of that and that's valid grandpa um and this one he was particularly manipulative so i really didn't like that it also has a pushy hero and i don't like pushy heroes unless they get um punched for their pushiness which does happen in some Norman roberts books um but not in this one so i didn't really like it that much and gave it probably two stars so that is unfortunate it just was not to my taste whereas a lot of normal robert Robert's books are to my taste then we have my dysphoria monster which i heard about from the author on tiktok um which is all about a young kid maybe 10 i think she's in middle school um before and after transition and how the dysphoria monster um, gets bigger when people call um, her a boy and stuff like that and how things get so much better after she transitions and how um, meeting a trans man helped her figure out that that was what was going on with her that she was trans um, and helped her explain it to her family so it's a very sweet little story and very informative and very um, uh, accessible to all ages so i really like that and it's a few days before the end of the month but i'm not going to pressure myself to read um to finish anything before the end of the month um so there shouldn't be anything more to add to this i'm going to be playing in my new video game i got for christmas a lot it's fire emblem warriors um three hopes and it's not as good as regular fire emblem game it's one of those ones um it's not strategy based it's like smash and bash which isn't my favorite but i still love fire emblem so i'm enjoying it quite a bit i'd love to know how your december went um if you have any thoughts on any of these books and if you'd like to leave an emoji my camera battery is flashing so i'm very stressed <laughs> about finishing this outro um how about a heart thank you so much for watching and i'll see you in the next video bye